Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Solo Experience. This time we are playing the king of DPS, the Dragoon. And right now, we are at the height of the Moogle Tombstone event, meaning PvP goes really well or god-awful. This was in fact one amazing round, being rather even across the board for the entire match, resulting in a 6 kills to 1.6 million damage round. I also discovered a little movement tech for the Dragoon, in which Seduction resets High Jump after using High Jump. This allowed me to escape from battle with great ease. And before we jump in, I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you. Thanks to the continued support, we just reached 2500 subscribers. Enjoy today's video, let us begin. From past experiences with PvP during Tombstone events, I already know that bold plays and aggression are required. I treat every round as if I am against a Q-Sync group. And oftentimes, with so many being here just for the free tombstones, you can find you can make plays you normally would not. As myself and the team push beach, very quickly we encounter the immortal flames. As to be expected, I am not looking to dive in first. What I like to look for is small clusters, at which point I jump in and use horrid roar. The more I hit the better, as this will aid in farming assists, as well as reducing damage dealt to myself by 50%. 25% if you have also used Gear Skogul. Seeing the Immortals being fairly well coordinated, I am not rushing in full aggro. Instead, I look for the openings made by my team. I give chase to finish off a weakened Reaper, overextending in the process. In this situation, do not hesitate to use Guard. All of the crowd control is about to come flying your way. Not only did this allow for my escape, a ninja on the Immortals team got far too greedy trying to take me down, resulting in his fast death and giving me the time to restore before engaging with the adders on their flank. Jumping ahead to the retreat, my aim was simple, stall the point for even a few seconds, then make my escape across the bridge. You can always count on players to never turn around. Although this looks risky, I was left rather free to slide away without much effort. In doing so, we catch a Sage off guard. I throw in some damage in order to claim the assist before moving onto the hill. The Immortals have forced the Adders out and my team are regrouping. So now I am looking to Limit Break. I am Limit Breaking this moment not for huge kills to make my score look good, I am Limit Breaking now to create the opening for my team, burning some of their resources in the process. Right after landing, I throw in Horrid Roar once more and make my escape. Normally, I would heal up the fall. However, look at the battle. The Immortals have invested almost all of their limit breaks, right as my team are flooding in with their very own. So now is not the time to slow down, instead looking to dive weak targets in order to build some battle high. In doing so during this push, I achieved battle high 1, just as the Immortal Flames begun to divide. And with a small group still by my side, and knowing how weak they still are, I poke some more, allowing us to snag one last machinist kill in the process before needing to rotate. With the Immortals now dealt with, the time has come to rotate west. Since I am late to regroup, instead of going south missing the fight, I look to hit them from the side, as I can see members of our alliance going in. Using the lower terrain to my advantage with line of sight, a poor unsuspecting machinist preys victim, allowing me to continue to push a while longer, making things easier for my team should they arrive, at which point what I believe to be a dancer ninja duo playing together attempt to take me down, wasting both of their limit breaks in the process. Unfortunately for them, I keep my health high, avoiding the one-shot. With their burst now out of the window, they are now on the defensive. I move up with the few who follow in, putting us not only in the lead, this also granted us full uncontested access to mid. This is ideal, as contesting mid against a full team with no pressure is a struggle. However, the Immortal Flames are clearly paying attention. They disengage from their fight with the Adders to rotate. I guard the ramp ready to limit break. And thanks to our team's early rotate to mid, we claim the zone with no contest. I use Limit Break here regardless, to try and deter them from pushing through, landing myself in an awkward position with a bad camera angle. In such scenarios, play safe, guard up and sort out your camera. This gave me the time to see my exit plan, going south under the platform, in order to slide past the adders up top, who are pushing through looking for some revenge. Again, I do not heal to full. I can clearly see the power of the push has weakened, and I need to be there to defend allies, leading the way those by my side rally taking down their siege, at which point I turn back 
only to get jumped by a paladin and a dark knight. A rather unusual play, as I cannot picture either of these getting any kills or escaping. I ignore their dark knight in order to dismount their paladin from escape. Just as the Immortal Alliance pushes the hill, I spot my team's Dragoon going in with their Limit Break, so I switch my target to their ninja that he lands on, claiming myself a second kill and getting me ever closer to that battle high free. This time, however, I do drop back to fully heal. My team are getting taken down, and if I need to jump in for kills, I need all the resources at the ready. We might be in third place for now, but this match is far from over. All I need to do is stick to my game plan for a level 5 battle high. Hanging in close, I am pumping in damage, in order to charge my limit break, when I spot the chance to finish off an unsuspecting summoner. Fearing crowd control spam, I drop off out of sight just after I claim the kill. Now on the flank, I drop a limit break from the side. Again, I am not going for kills. Instead, I am trying to pressure them out, as the adders are pushing in. If we can deal with one team at a time, the situation would be far better for us. This was well-timed, as most of the adders looped north, in order to flank the immortals. This divided them greatly, allowing us to steamroll those who did not retreat sooner. Running down a paladin into a dancer, diving on past to their scholar, and as a group we rush north, slaughtering the remaining immortals caught off guard after their battle against the adders. In doing so, we steal their A rank, giving our score that much needed boost, evening out the match once again. Jumping ahead slightly, I had rotated back to mid ready for a possible spawn. However, I rotate back as my team have gone to the beach with the Immortals looking for blood. And in this fight, I discovered some tech for the Dragoon against Dancers. Watch closely. This battle started once again with a flank. Diving in early with Horrid Roar, I then move in and out, following the other Dragoon's limit breaks. Once the crowd control hits my way, I guard up. This is where I found a little trick by mistake. The Reaper is moving past, so I target him as my high dive target to jump away. In doing so, I got hit by a Dancer's Seduction, causing this ability to update weirdly. I had already moved location. The damage did not go through from high jump and the action was reset, allowing me to continue the chase into their Reaper while being safe from the Horde. So if you can time your high dive just right with Seduction, and I imagine it might work the same way with Hysteria, you could get a double movement ability. I am going to end the voiceover here, as we are now entering the end game. I shall be repeating the same strategy shown, as well as claiming a full level 5 battle high, and this match remains action packed and fairly even until the end. I won't spoil the ending and the battles to come, so take your guess on which team wins this round. If you are yet to try out Dragoon for yourself, I can highly recommend giving it a go. After all, Dawn Trail will see big changes coming to every class, so enjoy them while you can. Thanks for tuning in, and I shall see you all in the next one.